Welcome to a new daily top ask credit video. Today's topic. What is something you consider disgusting yet others consider sexy? Butt implants. I'm amazed by how many thinks it's attractive. They look like you are wearing a poorly inflated fat suit. I'm so glad I bought instead of rented. Michael Scott. I've only seen this in porn BC if anyone ever tried this on me it would be over in a second, but when people do anal and then back to vaginal sex. I want to vomit and I'm so concerned for her health, that's asking for a vaginal infection. They don't show you the before part in porn where they're douching their ass with fabuloso and lining it with painter's tape so nothing sticks lol. Man's got a degree and everything. My ex-husband unfortunately did that to me, without my consent, by the way, and I got the absolute worst duty. I had to get special antibiotics because the initial prescription wouldn't work on whatever the bacteria was. I got ooties a lot when I was with him, and it wasn't until later on that I realized it's because he had absolutely terrible hygiene nauseated face I haven't had a single one since I left him four years ago. I'm so sorry. Mine did the exact same. I seem more prone to UTIs now, unfortunately skeptical smiley face. Towering over someone. I read it in fantasy books a lot and a few men have tried it at bars. They walk up to me and stand really close looking down at me at an unnatural angle for a neck to be at. Back tf up I can see your brain through your nose at this distance. I can see that you're tall from across the room. March your end looking ass a few feet back and try again. I can't stop laughing at march your end looking ass a few feet back and try again. There's the real reason the entwives all left tears of joy rolling on the floor laughing. Long fake nails. My wife just got nails for a wedding. Not long, but just past the fingertip. Back scratches are incredible. The happy medium. I would also request head scratches while you can, that shit's the good shit. Yeah nails are fine. Bro is talking about those MFERS who have like 3 inch long nails looking like Edward Scissorhands. Baby talk, voice. Or anime voice for that matter. Don't know if it's one and the same, but that shit is such a turn off. Asian porn, for this reason, fucking disgusts me. Why would deliberately sounding like a young child be sexy? Like, at all. Unless, IDK, you find children sexy. OMFG this. I work with a woman who regularly does the baby talk voice and uses actual baby talk. Mostly to men in the building but she's tried it with me a few times and I make her repeat herself until she enunciates like an adult instead of, I YWWEYWWE need help with this whittle PWOBWEM, fuck all the way off with your Elmer Fudd bullshit. Mom you're 47, there are no babies present, stop it you infantile middle-aged psycho. If I had the balls, I'd Larry David the situation and go, you really think that will help you, don't you? Step sibling, parent porn. IDK why there is so much of that but geez. 80% of porn vids are titled, stepsis, or, stepdaddy, nauseated face. So, I have a theory about this one that is different than all the other theories I've heard about why it's popular, so I'll share here. I think it's popular because those things are taboo but also feel safe. Within the fantasy, your step whomever is someone you aren't supposed to be boning, but they're also someone whom you believe will always be nice to you, have your best interests at heart, be committed to your pleasure, etc. And I think putting those two factors together is why that genre came to rule the porn world. It's taboo because you're not supposed to fuck family. Step siblings and step parents are family, but not blood, so it's still taboo but it's like only half taboo. That's really all there is to it. It's forbidden so people fantasize about it. We always want that which we're told we can't have. Some other factors I've seen thrown around on Reddit, one, extremely easy to include. If you aren't already committed to having the people be some other pre-existing relationship, it takes zero effort to have them call each other step whatever a few times so they can include that category on the video. Two, easy explanation for proximity. It gives a very easy straightforward reason for these two people to casually exist together in a home. It also justifies this being their first sexual interaction in a way that having them date, be married wouldn't. 3. Guarantees at least a bare minimum story. If they're calling each other step whatever, you at least know that there's going to be some dialogue that doesn't happen in the middle of sex. It's not much, but it's at least more roleplay than you'd get from the videos that don't show anything outside of penetration. 99% sure they throw it in for an easy fetish tick. Most people will just skip the line to the action and ignore it. For the people into it they made a video that will attract them at the cost of one or two lines. A lot of fetish content has a higher price than that, both in what it will cost to get ex-preformer and in gear, costume setting. My guess is when the trend started those videos saw above average engagement, due to normal viewers plus repeat people who did go for their fetish. Now that the market is swamped I hope that it does out as no individual video really benefits from it, as there can't be that many people with that fetish, meaning the return isn't likely worth it anymore.
the fucked up eyebrows that are super unnatural looking, and super long nails. Slightly off the topic, having your young children in your pics on dating profiles is super off-putting. I have kids and don't care if you do but you should not be posting pics of them on date sites. Edit, holy shit guys, 2500 up notes in an hour. I must have struck a chord. Going through comments now. I suspect the kid's statement is a driving force. I agree. Some predators only date the parent to get access to the child. It's fine if they're blurred I'm a Better to know up front if the person has kids as it's the number one deal breaker, and when you have kids, time is your number one commodity, dot you can't afford to waste it. Pooh, however small that percentage is, just bleh. Wait, people, think poo is sexy. There is a thing called a scat fetish. Honestly, anything you think of can be a fetish. Feet, I just don't understand it. Yeah, weird. Don't get wrong I prefer my partner to have feet. I prefer my partner to have feet. Strange. I wonder how common this preference is. As someone who likes feet, I don't understand it either. Honestly, on the surface it's a totally vanilla fetish. It's not any different, I'm o, from people that have a thing for hands, as an example. I think the issue with feet is how vocally weird a lot of feet people are. Like, sure there's thousands of people with a foot fetish that keep it just as personal as people with a variety of fetishes. But feet people have a disproportionate amount of dudes in the fold that are openly and aggressively super fucking weird about it. As an, average, guy with borderline dysmorphia, any, humiliation, or cuckolding type content. It's hard enough not feeling adequate in this world, don't need something that actively makes it worse. Feels bad man. Edit, not kink shaming anyone into it, but for me, I gave up dating a long time ago due to my issues, so yeah, not compatible with my mental health. You are Kenna. I feel you bro. You are adequate for yourself. Don't look for acceptance by others. Fake anything. Injected lips, breast or butt implants, ridiculous makeup etc. Fake stuff only looks bad when it's done poorly. When it's done well, you don't even know it's there. Yeah, this is kind of in the same realm as dudes who say they don't like makeup, and then you ask them to clarify and they send you a pic of a lady wearing a natural makeup look. Body dysmorphia is one hell of a drug. Super muscled up gym rat type guys. I don't get what is so attractive about that. I've dated men who are magazine cover level fit. And you can't go out to eat with them or bring over some ice cream or whatever bc they're too obsessed with their intake. My cousin is one of those, and he never had a big problem with intake. Like dude would demolish a whole bag of chili cheese fritos in one sitting, like any normal person would. But he'd also work out like two to three hours a day. Every. Single. Day. Religiously. It was hell on relationships, because it didn't matter if it was someone's birthday or anniversary or what, because he wasn't going to miss working out that evening. The only thing he ever skipped workout evenings for were events for his daughters. It drove every woman he dated nuts, because, I can't believe he doesn't want to go to the beach for my birthday. Like, he's 5% body fat and you just watched him dip pizza in ranch dressing and wash it down with Mountain Dew. How did you think he maintained that? Gym rats are trying to impress other men, not women. Bodybuilders are definitely doing it for the sport and other bodybuilders. At a certain point they've moved beyond trying to impress, others, and it becomes a subculture around lifting and fitness that is about impressing each other. I see this as a good thing, for them, and I wish other people would be more understanding about it. They, the outsiders, just sound very judgmental about someone's body. The irony. Scat. Bada be bada bada bope. I'm the scat man. Okay, thanks, John. When women clap their tits together five times, then crab walk backwards around the living room going, pf 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 I just don't get it. Clearly you're just not receptive to our mating calls. I hear ya. Four claps is pretty sexy, five is a little much. Four is overkill. Mom used to say one slap for the father, one for the son, and one for the Holy Spirit. Are you serious RN? I can even clap my tits together five times and crab walk backwards in my living room anymore. ISTG men think everything we do is for them face with rolling eyes. I don't understand this new thing where girls stick their tongue out and cross their eyes. WTF are you doing? That isn't even a kind of hot. It's called a heigao and yeah I honestly don't really get it either lol. Pretty sure it has something to do with anime, hentai but I could def be wrong. I skip right over those thumbnails haha. That being said, if it works for someone more power to them. Yeah it's supposed to mimic the, fuck silly, face in hentai. Obviously it doesn't really work that well on people that are not cartoons. I think you're talking about a hago face, and it's, a Japanese thing. I think it's supposed to be, I'm so overwhelmed with pleasure that I can't control my body, but it just looks goofy. For me it's kind of like baby talk turned up to 11. 
more like it's a hentai thing, normal Japanese people ain't doing that shit lol. It's for guys who are extremely attracted to girls with Looney Tunes post-anvil drop levels of brain damage. BBLs with disproportionately gigantic butts. I think what throws me off the most is how disproportionate the ass is to the thighs. Like Kim K is an example but she has twig thighs and a gigantic ass. How does that look good or right? The lower half of Kim Kardashian looks like the tooth emoji tooth. They call those wisdom tooth bodies tooth. And skinny thighs, looks like a Christmas ham on toothpicks.